In this video, I want to talk about something special that I've never done before. I'm just a one simple regular chef in the world and I thought how can I help sitting here outside the countries that's happening horrible things right now. So I spoke with a few Ukrainians and I asked what is the most typical pastries there, what do they eat, how is it called and for my surprise I found one particular cake that we also have in Lithuania and I thought that's it. I want to make a honey cake which represents something more than the cake. So in Ukraine, it's called Nadovning. In Lithuania, we call it Nadutis. So I decided to stick to Lithuanian recipe and show you how it's done. I will put the recipe down below in the description so all of you can make the recipe and enjoy this deliciousness from our countries. And now, let's get to the kitchen. Let's begin making the dough by arranging by Marie, which is a pan of hot water in which a bowl is placed for slow cooking. So I just put uh, honey and butter together and gently melting it everything together. And once it's melted, I'm just going to switch off the heat and we'll put sugar. And here is white sugar and brown sugar. So now I switch the heat off but we'll still keep it warm and we'll put the sugar in. As of now, we're not gonna do anything else. We will wait till it's cooled down a little bit and then we will continue mixing eggs, cream and flour mix. This dough flour mix is a combination of plain flour, baking powder, a pinch of salt and optionally some spices. So the batter has cooled down already so I can safely put egg and cream. And now flour mix. So additional spices like cinnamon, cloves or anything you like is optional. couple of reasons. First of all, we make sure we remove all this possible dirt remained in the flour. We create air by sifting flour. It smells really beautiful and it kind of reminds me Christmas period. So the batter is really soft, but we won't add any additional flour because it would change the texture of the cake. So what we're gonna do now, just gonna divide this in a couple of parts and leave it to chill. Since we're giving some extra time to relax, it will be all fine. Relaxing time also depends on you, how much time you have. Ideally, I prefer to leave it overnight. Just forget it about it for now and I'll see you tomorrow. So before I even start taking out the dough from the fridge from yesterday, I will do tea because we will need to moisture the sheets that we are about to bake. It really depends on you what tea you want to go for. You can go with black tea, uh, any herbal tea. So let's have some flour on the side because the dough might be quite sticky. Given we have around 770 grams of dough, I recommend to divide it into even 7 parts, that means we'll get 7 layers cake. So let's pre-shape these bowls so it will be much easier to roll them. Don't add flour at this point or if you wish just a tiny bit to prevent them from sticking. Don't overwork them, I recommend to put them in the fridge while rolling one by one. So we don't want to put too much flour or overwork this dough too much because it will make it harder. So I rolled it around half centimeter thickness. If you want to get more uniform shape, I recommend you just go very, very slow. Push it, turn it, push it, turn it. So you make sure you get a, like a nice round shape. It's not too thick, just around half centimeter. Ideally, we want to chill the dough this before baking them, so I stack them between the layers of parchment paper. It is actually a very fast job, and in the blink of an eye, all seven sheets are done. Set your oven to 180 degrees, and it will take no longer than 10 minutes to bake. Once it's baked, I put the knife around the ring that I'm going to set my cakes in, and set scraps aside. 
Repeat with the rest and let's wait for these discs to cool down. I'm not gonna lie, it's really hard to resist not to snack these scraps. But okay, Christina, just focus. Just before jumping on layering the cake, let's split three scraps. I never worry too much about the extra crumbs, they can easily be turned into decoration. So those are already cooled down, they harden quite a lot, so these sheets are quite fragile, so I handle them very very carefully. But as of now, let's leave them aside and let's do our cream mix. I know typically on pastry to be precise is a requirement, but in this case you control the amount of cream. Some people love more creamy cakes and some more sponge. My optimal amount of cream for this cake is around 600 grams. So then add sugar, have lemon zest and some juice. I think the lemon creates a beautiful balance in this cake, but be careful with the amount of lemon juice and don't turn it into lemon cake. Mix gently everything together and let's continue building this cake. It may have looked that the cream is really soft and might not set, but it sets really firmly and nicely. Very important to moisture the layers with sufficient amount of tea. As you see, I brush them quite a lot. Then a layer of cream, spray evenly and repeat. I can guarantee this cake won't be dry at all. So typically this cake is done with the sour cream, but since I live outside my country, the closest ingredient I found is cream fresh. Finish with a top layer of cream and after that sprinkle some crumbs on top. We will also use the split crumbs from yesterday to cover the sides. Leave it to set for at least a couple of hours or ideally overnight. I left it overnight as based on my experience they develop more flavor. Alternatively you can leave the sides uncovered and create a bit more rustic look. Since I made a couple of different versions here's how it looks. So if we stick to the traditional version, we cover the sides completely. Decorate as you wish, normally we keep it quite simple and not over elaborate. This specific cake requires a bit of patience, but without a doubt, it is totally worth it. So as you see here, the layers of cream are a little bit bigger, but the sponge is still very moist. So I just wanted to show you the difference that you can play with the amount of cream as you want. This is a very, very crumbly business happening over here. So this one, just because I added some cinnamon, it looks a little bit darker, but to be honest, it has an amazing flavor. You just need to control this amount of cinnamon because if you put too much, then it will taste more like a cinnamon cake rather than honey. So the way I think about the donations, help in general, that it doesn't need to be something significantly massive big. And no one is asking you to cut your budget in half. It can be a small thing, it's like for example, maybe I want to skip my daily coffee today or be more happy with more humble dinner today. So I think these little things are very precious and valuable. So thank you very much for helping those or maybe you know your own ways to contribute. I appreciate it so much. Thank you very much for staying till the end of this video and see you next week.